Um, and I suppose that's what you know was freaking me out a bit as as I just become a father, you know, eleven years ago. And I was thinking, what kind of what world have I brought yeah. a child into? And and then, but then as a folky, I suppose or it sounds frivolous, but uh, actually then I started thinking about all the positive things that you might get back in, and, that, and the positive things about humanity, which is something that you're talking about as well, and that if you remove cars from the equation, then yes, you, you start to live more locally, and, and that's a pretty wonderful thing, actually, living locally, because I think we're all, you know, I mean, as much as we're very comfortable these days, and we're, you know, every, everything's very convenient, yeah. also, a lot of statistics seem to suggest that we're all more miserable. I think you lose a lot of sense of community as well. So, so yeah. living, particularly in London, but in, in modern towns, modern cities, where you don't even really talk to your neighbours anymore. But sure. the, the street is, is is a way that cars get around, yeah. and it's not somewhere we really kind of congregate and, and, and have a sense of community in society. And I think you, the other thing is that you define your personal community by whether or not you like someone. So you have a, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You have a group of people that you like or you have similar interests with. And actually, that's not really community. Community is about accepting the people that are around yeah. you geographically, and you don't necessarily have to like them, all, but you are part of the same community. Yeah. And that 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 seems quite fundamentally different, particularly now with Facebook and that sort of stuff, where where we're all very much these are my people, and these are not my people. And that, I, think there's yeah. a, I mean, to not linger on Twitter and social media and Facebook too long, but I think one of the problems with that is is this big echo chamber as well. Yeah. If, if you are only exposed to the opinions or viewpoints of people you've kind of pre-selected. Yeah. To, to agree with you that you kind of get on with you lose a lot of that know, diversity in thought and kind of challenges to, to your own belief system and we've, we've seen loads of this with with kind of brexit and the trump vote and these kind of echo chambers and, and the fake news of social media yeah that you're not really being challenged to think yeah or not. No. I mean, this is one of the things i try to explore with book again is just yeah. take the time maybe get a bit more satisfaction on the things we take for granted yeah and look around you and ask where it comes from and think about how your life might potentially be different yeah. if some of that were to go away. Yeah. It's a perfect scenario or the end of the, the age of war. Absolutely, yeah. And I love all the stuff that you do about you know fire and making a, a wood ethanol was a, was a <laughs> yes. new one on me. That was fantastic how you can make power power a car out of, uh, out of basically... Yeah, so, so before the age of oil, like that timber wood was 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 this mainstay, was the, the main provider of all the feedstock we use. And something simple as, as taking some wood and essentially baking it. You turn it to, to charcoal, you carbonise it, and in that process you drive off a lot of the, the simple chemistry that was inside that wood. And that's how you can get methanol and ethanol, get kind of solvents and useful chemistry mm. like that. You can get things like turpentine and resins, which are used for you know, waterproofing clothing or, or, or protecting uh, buildings from, from rot and, and, and incense and things like that. And that was, that was like common knowledge hundred years ago right. and yeah, yeah. We, we kind of superseded that and moved into a new generation of oil and one of the things I found absolutely fascinating when, when I discovered this when I was researching for the book is as you just mentioned you, you do run cars on oil but you can actually run a car using nothing more than wood as fuel and, and use right. this what's known as gasification process you, you break down wood with a heat of its own fire without letting oxygen get into it so it burns completely and it drives off lots of gases and vapours and smoke, which is itself combustible. And if you collect all those gases and point them into the engine cylinders in the bonnet of your car, you can drive a car using wood. So, fuel. presumably, we could also drive a generator this evening for our street party. For, for getting your, your lights up and running, to, to, exactly. to power the lights and also the PA. So how are we going to do a PA? Any ideas for that amplification? Yeah, so kind of microphones and speakers are relying on pretty simple science to with um, when we realised in the mid-1850s that uh, magnetism and electricity, so we've got the kind of bits of iron stuck together and we understood that you can get an electric shock um, if, you, if you rub certain materials together or things like stingrays can give you a shock. So we understood these two phenomena and there were huge transformation understandings and realised that magnets and electricity are basically the same thing, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. Right. So the microphone you use for every single gig and the speakers that then turn that electricity back into sound they're relying on the interplay between electricity and magnetism, between electromagnetism. So I, I talk about in the book about how you can make a simple microphone, make a simple speaker. And the thing that, again, I found absolutely fascinating was how you can make a really, really rudimentary radio for yourself. And a, a lot of the examples I give in the book are from our own history. It's not just kind of speculation arm waving, it's, it's things that we've done. 
And during the Second World War, when a lot of prisoners of war were put for them interred and they were not allowed to, to receive news in the, the war effort, um, a lot of these radio engineers were really ingenious and they made radios themselves out of scrap they just find lying around in this POW camp. So using barbed wire and a burial, uh, getting kind of foil from a pack of cigarettes from a backpack and you can roll that up to make a pastel, which is a technical kind of electronic component. And the key part, the heart of any radio, is the component that takes the sound of the radio carrier wave. Uh, kind of strips that out and then you can play that through speakers and we do that with you know modern electronics and transistors today but you can you can also achieve that by using nothing more than a rusty razor blade you can get an electronic function of a rusty razor blade um which is as a cat whisker radio right. and, and receive radio signals you can transmit radio almost as easily so i think I think we sorted. I think so. We, we, so <laughs> we, we can have your own to, radio uh, station. You don't even have to well, play live gigs. So we gotta, we're gonna, we've got to go and make some fireworks first, and then um, we're going to rig up PA and set up our own radio station and broadcast it after <laughs> the uh, after the asteroid hits in about half an hour. So Sounds thank you good. very, very much for sorting us out for that, and um, it's been very nice to talk to you. Thank you.